Sachets of Felix as good as it looks. And I must admit, it does look quite good. 
once he's fanked around this ship in an evening time, for the remaining 30 minutes that Edward is awake, he's in at ease with himself. He's not coping. I've got a cat that can't cope. And you say to yourselves, how do you know he's stressed? Well, I'll tell you, it gets even more absurd. Edward has started to self-harm. He has, he's bitten some of the fur off one of his paws. My well, missus spied him first, she said, that's not right. I said, well, it's not ideal. <laughs> she said, take him down a vet. I thought, great, I've got to get the fucker in the cat box now. <laughs> he only weighs four pounds, but he's slippery and vicious. <laughs> so I approached him from behind, dropping him in, using gravity as my primary weapon. <laughs> I give him about four foot notice. <laughs> so on the way in to the box, he spotted what was going on and he put his two front paws over the top of the box like that. He sort of went, Ooh, solid, like that. He created the perfect cat fulcrum. He's there, like that. It's really solid, because he saw this thing on the Discovery Channel, you see, about the pyramids. And as we all know, the pressure at the tip of a pyramid is inversely proportional to the pressure of the base, which is why it's the perfect symmetrical object. So he's there thinking to himself, the pyramids have been standing for 4,000 years. Our appointment's at three o'clock. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm going to win this one. <laughs> so I hit him with a spade. <laughs> Fuck him. He didn't see that episode. <laughs> I took him down the vet. To so me and Edward Maloney went into the surgery area. I poured him out of the box onto the table. And then the vet took Edward's temperature in the old fashioned way. Lifted his tail, inserted a thermometer. Edward wasn't expecting that. <laughs> that came as quite a surprise. He made a noise I've never heard him make before. I've had him seven years. And he went, like that. Really deep. No. Not so much from his diaphragm, more from his very soul. Do you know what I mean? No. Like that. And it's the, it's the first time that I've done a show for the British Forces Foundation, and I genuinely hope it isn't the last because, you know, I don't, you know the bravery goes beyond words for something like me, so, you know, in, in the gratitude isn't a big enough word. But if you, um, if you take anything away from my little performance here this evening, there's one thing I'd like you to take away with you, and it's, um, Mao, right? <laughs> and, uh, what I want you to do, half ten on Monday morning, right? Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, just put down whatever you're doing, and just go, Mao, like that, okay? And I can guarantee that a workmate will say something like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and just look at them with a straight face and say, it's the sound of a cat being bummed. <laughs> Matter of fact, like that. And they just carry on with your work. <laughs> they say in this business, my friends, they say you're as good as your audience. I haven't been as good as you've been kind and patient here with me. I've been John Maloney. I hope you enjoyed my little section. Will you please welcome back everybody else that you've seen this evening? Please welcome back. Thank you. I believe we can have a little photo taken. Thank you to everybody who's performed here this evening. Much appreciated to everybody. It's been a pleasure. See you again. Bravest of the brave. Good night, my best. Thank you.